Well, there's something more we wanted to show at the Intermountain Train Expo. Right. We were there a few months ago. Right. And we did that show. But um, at that time, we said we wanted to show you a couple of other things, one of which is the S-scale layout by John Pratt. Yes, isn't this neat? It's a really interesting, interesting railroad. I just really like to build and I love the contest. All hand laid track, all high numbers. This is the number 15 crossover. Yeah. That's a, this is my lowest number on the standard gauge, which is a number eight. John is modeling in S-scale. Right. And principally, it's, it's both narrow gauge and standard gauge, but very few people do uh, highly detailed standard gauge in S. It's just a really rare, rare commodity. I've never heard of it before till now. And he's from Manti, Utah. Right, the home of the rat fink. The home of the rat fink. And equally interesting, uh, his day job, if you can call it his day job, he's got a shop there where he builds harps. Well, how neat. Beautiful, beautiful harps, the Pratt harp. Isn't that cool? I'd love to see the shop and, and see these instruments in person. These are just uh, his publicity photos that right. he's got. Oh, but beautiful. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, so I guess it makes sense that he would be into uh, highly detailed uh, woodworking and that sort of thing. Oh, on perfectionism. Perfectionism uh, when it comes to building uh, his railroad and, and a lot of scratch building on his railroad. So one of the great challenges of doing standard gauge S is that it's such an unusual thing. There's almost no readily available products. Oh dear. Uh, you can find some, some very rare brass locomotives. Of course, you can scratch build your own stuff, but these are all brass engines that he's been able to acquire. But it's it's a difficult uh, scale and gauge. Uh, but this is this is kind of more typical of what you have to do if you're going to do that scratch building, which is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, but look at the beautiful detail. These are neat because they haven't been painted yet. Right, you can see how they are put together. Yeah, it's fun to see. Sometimes you can tell a lot of construction technique just by seeing something before it's been painted. I meant to kit, but I didn't like the roof because it wasn't accurate, so I made a new roof for it. Those are scratch built, but not done yet. Not painted yet. And uh, that's a kit bash. This is a scratch built. That's a scratch built. And that's an RTR. And this is only a small amount of my stuff. You know, but this is my layout. So it's such a good this is layout. the whole layout. Yeah, this is the whole layout. One of the things I really like about his layout is he shares uh, at least my personal fascination with covered wagons. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, these, these diesels, the, the streamlined diesels from the late 1940s and 1950s. So that's his era, the late 1940s and 1950s. Now, part of this railroad has also been laid in narrow gauge. Really? Look at that. Isn't that neat? Oh, so he's, my. he's got dual gauge track, and then at the back there, you can see that's just regular three foot gauge track. Right. Now, SN3 is a very popular scale and gauge combination. Our friends Gil Bennett and Doug Jolly have both built their railroads entirely in SN3. Right. And, and that's just, uh, it's a really good size when you start looking at doing narrow gauge, and so there's a lot of people doing their narrow gauge in S, SM3. And he's got several pieces of narrow gauge here, but most of the railroad is standard gauge. I'm gonna run this one for you. Good it's, deal. It's a really high-end brass from Boo Rim and Korea. They're the best, I think, Boo Who Rim. Who is it? Boo Rim. Boo Rim. Yeah. They do HOS, they do everything. They're an extremely high-end, good-quality company. Let me come around that side and get a lot of hot water. It wasn't all the way over. I think we're okay now. Let's, let's try it again. Thank you.
PVC. And then a lot of details, of course. Looks like we had another little run. Put it back on the track. How about that? This is my wife, Lori, over here. Hi. She was sitting on the car that day and knocked on your door. What? Yeah. What's up? Yeah, good luck. Okay, here we go. The track works really good, but it takes a long time to work out the electrical bugs. So it, it's just a, a sort of a shelf railroad, a switching layout. Right. It doesn't go around in a circle. No. But uh, it's really long, and apparently his shop where he builds the harps is big enough that he can have this set up all the time. Well, that's nice. That's really neat. And, and you know, I, I've i always been a big fan of shelf layouts, point-to-point -point shelf layouts. Right. They can kind of just go back and forth, and they're interesting. Well, you can fit them anywhere. Right. Even a great big one like this is so much easier to fit than something that goes around in circles. Right. And it's more realistic, too. Yeah, trains go from one place to another place. They rarely go around in circles. Well, yeah. At, at amusement parks <laughs> and stuff go. like that. But uh, typically, if you got on a train in Cincinnati, you wouldn't be taking that train to Cincinnati. <laughs> I be, hope not. <laughs> well, hopefully, you'd be taking it to Denver or someplace yeah. like that. So Chicago. Chica all, somewhere. All trains go to Chicago, yes, I think. Yes, yeah. I think so. Anyway, it sort of seems like his goal in building this railroad has been... Uh, mostly just to provide himself with a place to run his scratch built and brass trains. Right. Um, he's more into the equipment than he is into the railroad. And uh, he said that what he brought here to the show is just a small fraction of what he actually has. Wow. <laughs> so he's much more of a equipment builder. Right. So the other person we wanted to get caught up with, we showed him in the first show, is Greg Hardy. Right. And G. Greg and I go back to when you know, Shag was a pun. Shag was a pun, practically to high school, not quite. But um, he's into really, really early engines, and he brought a few here to to attempt to sell. But we were all together in Chama. Right, and there it is. <laughs> So uh, we must confess that we too have a great love affair with these really early engines. They're my favorite. They're choo-choo trains. Right, <laughs> exactly. 
But there was a, an era in American locomotives when they were just these absolutely gorgeous jewels. Oh, no kidding. Right after the Civil War and through to about 1890, just these absolutely beautiful engines. So uh, Greg models almost exclusively that era and much of what we do is also that era. So the gathering of Victorian locomotives in Chama just, just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all went over there to see this amazing collection of locomotives that all gathered on the Cumbers and Toltec. And Greg came because he wanted to take about four million pictures. And I said, please share your pictures with us. Right, aren't they beautiful? And so here's just a little gallery of uh, Greg's pictures. Right. Well, we'll get back to work on our own railroad. Yes, we are highly inspired. We are highly inspired. Uh, it's always fun to go to these train shows like the Intermountain Train Expo and just see what other people are up to and get caught up with everybody and then go back to work on your own railroad. Yes. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel or if you're, heaven forbid, not a subscriber, then you can become a subscriber by clicking on the blue button, which is coming up just about now. Right there. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you on Tuesday with some Tuesday foolishness. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.